Hello everyone. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Uh, sorry we didn't have a devotional for you yesterday, but kind of need a little day off. And so uh, kind of took it easy a little bit yesterday after after the good weekend we had. Uh, it was great to celebrate our risen Lord. We're going to continue with that in our Essential Jesus study. Uh, I think I mentioned the other day, there's there's several more to come. And and this fits right in with, with where we've we've just been. Uh, it, it's again, it's on the YouVersion Bible app or uh, Bible.com. And this is day 85 of that series. And so we're going to pick up there. And it, it covers 1 Corinthians 15, which, which uh, I mentioned that uh, on Sunday. And uh, uh, actually like a few times there, it's, it's kind of the resurrection chapter. It's Paul describing his view of the resurrection and how important it was to him. So, so let's dig in. This is a big passage. It's a long chapter. We really could break this up over several days, but uh, the way they do it on this is it's all 58 verses of 1 Corinthians 15. So uh, we better get to it. Let's begin with a prayer. My God, you are the God of hope who gives all your children a sure and certain hope of living in your presence forever. And I, I think that's that's one of the things I, I thought about yesterday, uh, you know, after our services and things on Sunday and how, you know, it, it just seemed like, I don't know about for you, but it just seemed like there's just a little extra hope, a little extra uh, belief, sure sureness to my faith. Uh, you know, after you celebrate Easter like that, there's there's something special about it and and how it, it it motivates us and keeps us going and refreshes us. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we every year spend spend uh, uh, at least that that Easter Sunday, but really even leading up to it, uh, we focus on the death and resurrection of Jesus because it's as I said yesterday, it's everything to us. It means everything. It's it's without it, it's we're we're pitied, as Paul's going to say here. Uh, we it gives us hope. It gives us a little bounce in our step when it comes to our faith. And, and I don't know about you, but that's what I've been experiencing these last few days because uh, just so enjoyed our, our our time of worship together. Well, let's dig in. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 15, or 58. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Uh, Paul says, this is it. This is everything. He says, by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Uh, you might as well pack up and go home. Uh, you know, every, as I said Sunday, you know, everything's go for everything Christian if it's true. If it's not, there's no need for any of it. Uh, but, but Paul says, by this gospel you are saved. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. This is the most th important thing, Paul says that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. After that, He appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Uh, there it is. That's, that's the gospel in a nutshell. That's what Jesus has done for us. He died, and He rose from the grave. And He says, here's the proof. You know, all these people, they all saw Him. And He really was really was dead and then he really was alive uh, and it's it's a, a beautiful thing then he appeared to james then to all the apostles and last of all he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born uh you know he says i i wasn't there to see it but i've you know jesus showed up to me and he he showed me who you know told me all about this and then i've i've learned about it from others as well and and, and all that, and so he he's he's grasped onto it, uh, you know. Even though he wasn't wasn't necessarily there, he 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 now believes it with all that he is. Uh, he says, "For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect." Paul says, "You know, look at me. I, my life has been completely changed." He was going one direction towards, you know, angry at God and all this stuff. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach and this is what you believed. Uh, the resurrection is, is everything. And Paul says, it's changed my life completely. Uh, you know, the resurrected king is resurrecting me. 
as we saying, and and that's what Paul is saying here that that the, he is he has been resurrected himself. He's been brought back to to life because of what uh, Jesus did. And let's keep going, verse twelve. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Uh, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Again, nothing's more important than the resurrection. In other words, you have to believe there is a resurrection. There was a resurrection that Jesus came back to life. Without it, it's all worthless. There's no no meaning to it. And, um, and see, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. There's no reason for it. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. In other words, we're, we're liars if it's not true, and it is true, he says. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. You know, he can't be raised if there's no such thing as, as a resurrection. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Uh, in other words, it's all worthless. You're without hope. There's no salvation. There's no hope for the future. There's no promise of, of heaven. Verse 18, then those who also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. So anyone that claimed to be a Christian, uh, they're, they're lost. There's no hope for them because if there's no resurrection, then you know, there's no future. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we have all, are of all people most to be pitied. Uh, in other words, it's, it's, it'd be very, very sad if there's no such thing as resurrection. Uh, but he says, verse 20, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so we're all like Adam, we all die physically, this, this, uh, this life that we have, we all die. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. In other words, since, since Adam sinned and he drug us all down with him, uh, you know, we all choose sin as well. We all, you know, are deserving of, of death. We talked a lot about that. Uh, but but since just as, as we were all dragged down with Adam, now he says, so in Christ, all will be made alive. Uh, we all get in on, on God's grace, the, the opportunity to have God's grace uh, because of what Jesus has done. Verse 23, but each in turn, Christ the first fruits, and then we, when he comes, those who belong to him. So just as he was raised, someday we'll be raised as well. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, uh, all sin. He destroys the devil and, and all of his minions. Uh, it says, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, uh, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Now if there is no resurrection, what will those, who, those do who are baptized to the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day, yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. In other words, there's no purpose to this life. We might as well go out and eat and drink and, and, you know, do whatever we want to do. Uh, because if, you know, if this life is all there is, you might as well, you know, whatever, uh, you think is going to bring you the most joy and the most happiness and, and that kind of thing. But he says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. In, in other words, there is something more. There is something to live for. There is a better life that uh, Jesus made possible. And, and he's saying, don't just act like there's no tomorrow. Do whatever you want. He's saying there is a tomorrow. And so you act 
and, and live uh, according to that. Now we move to verse 35, and the resurrection body is the title in, in the scripture. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of, of something else. But God gives it a body as he is determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, uh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly body is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. Uh, and some of this is hard for us to really understand. You know, what what uh, Paul is talking about here is is just, you know, we're talking about we, we go to the ground where we, 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 we die and they, you know, we get put in the ground. Uh, what, what then is resurrected when the final resurrection comes will be different. It'll be a heavenly body uh, instead of an earthly body. And yet there is, there's, he's kind of describing this process a little bit, helping, trying to help us understand what this means that, uh, you know, just like we're resurrected in the final resurrection. Verse 41, the sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and the star differs from star and splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. In a sense, you know, when when someone dies, it's it's a there's a breaking down of the body there. And I think he's just talking about there in in the way it's sown in dishonor. It's sown in the death of this body. And and there's there's you know it will be you know whenever we die, it's it's an ugly thing, right? It's it's a uh, an awful thing, but it, it's because there is because there is a, a breakdown in the body that stops working, and so that's what he's talking about with dishonor. He says it's sown, it's raised in glory for God's glory. It's it's God's you know reuniting you know that that life, bringing that life to our bodies, and so it's. Uh, uh, well, he goes on and says, it's sown in weakness, is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body. We'll be, we'll be different. Uh, and, and I think that's one of the hard things for us to understand really what this is going to look like. But, but he's giving us some ideas here of, of what it kind of might be like. You know, it's, it's uh, sown as perishable, raised imperishable to live forever. It's sown a natural body, it'll be raised a spiritual body. It's sown in weakness, it'll be raised in, in power. Uh, you know, and that's just kind of what he's getting at here. So, so it's written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. Jesus is a life-giving, uh, his spirit is life-giving. Spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was out of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have been have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. Uh, Jesus has made everything different for us. He has brought us life, and we bear His image. We we are brought back to life like He was brought back to life. The resurrection for Him. He's the the first to have come back, but then there's going to be we, we all will come back. Those who love Him and know Him. Verse 50, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Uh, we'll be brought back to life, or if we're uh, still walking this earth, we'll be, we'll be changed into... To, to what we need to be. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the same that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Uh, that's what we can say about Jesus. That's how we celebrated Easter, right? That he, he was dead and then he became alive. And we celebrate that death had been swallowed up in victory, been swallowed up in in power, in glory, and uh, well, the imperishable, uh, perishable, you know, with the imperishable. And then these famous words, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
uh, we've talked often these last several weeks about how our, our uh, you know, Jesus did all that he did for us in our place. He died for us, for our sins. Uh, we are the ones that should have been dealing with those things. And our sin is deserving of death. Uh, we deserve to die for, for all the, the sins that we've done. And, and uh, you know, the sting of death is sin. Sin is what leads us to the grave. It's what causes us to, to die. Uh, and the power of the sin is the law. And, and he's, you know, he's kind of making a statement there about, about the law. But uh, the thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of what Jesus did for us, we can have the victory. We can have the life. Death no longer has its sting. It, it, it doesn't no longer has a victory. Our victory is in Jesus, and that's what we hold on to. That's what gives us hope. That what, that's what makes today different, uh, you know, the hope that Jesus has brought. Verse 58, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in, in vain. Uh, God has great things planned for us, and he wants to use us. And, and uh, you know, and all of this other stuff is important. I mean, this whole issue of the resurrection is what, what motivates us and pushes us on, and that's where the therefore comes from. What's it there for? Well, it's there for you. Says, since, since all this stuff is true, since you've been saved, since Jesus died for you, since Jesus came back to life for you, he's saying, therefore, stand firm. Keep going, keep pushing, keep following the Lord. Let nothing move you. Uh, keep looking to, to Jesus and uh, uh, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Do everything you can for him because he's been so good to you. He's been so good to, to all of us. Well, let's go back to the reflection questions that uh, they have here. This is reflect, why is the fact of Christ's actual literal resurrection so important? Uh, well, it's, it's everything for us. There was a senator, maybe you saw this, that came out with a statement uh, who's supposedly a minister, came out and said that, uh, uh, well, the resurrection really isn't uh, necessary. You can basically work your way to, to heaven was the, the, the point that he was making. And, and, and that doesn't work. That isn't true. Jesus died on our behalf. He died for our sins. Um, and, and we have to, have to put our hope in him. We have to trust him for our salvation. And, and like I said, it makes all the difference in the world. It, it, it's everything to us. It's everything to our faith, the literal resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He was dead and he came back to life. That's what the early church believed. It's what Paul believed. It's what, you know, we must believe as well. Um, and it goes on, what hope do you find in this passage as you contemplate your own death? Uh, death is hard and it's something, but, you know, I... I I keep I mentioned that quote a lot, but I think it was Loretta Lynn that, that saying everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Uh, I think there's a fear there, and we don't have to be afraid because of what Jesus has done for us. And again, you can go to First Corinthians 15, and it, it tells us a lot about death and, and what it means. And and so we, you know, we just need to be uh, filled with with the hope, and and we look to the cross, we look to Jesus. Uh, for our saving and for our help, and uh, we trust Him. You know, we contemplate our own death. Well, we realize it's okay because it's what Jesus has done. He's triumphed over death. Uh, we will too. Uh, apply. Find some seeds and hold them in your hand. As you do, recall the actual seed dies and yet brings forth new life, just as our bodies will. Uh, again, it's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, and the closing prayer says, Loving Lord, I thank you that death is not the end of life, just a change. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus and the hope that it gives me. Um, well, let's continue in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for the hope that it gives. Thank you for the, the grace that you provided for us, the forgiveness for our sins. And Lord, we just praise you and we thank you for that. Keep reminding us of it. it it's easy to sort of now be is still in the glow of Easter, but help us to make it uh, a part of our daily lives, a part of, of who we are and how we live uh, with a recognition that uh, death is not the end for us. There's something more. There's victory. Uh, death doesn't have a sting when we trust you, when we put our hope in you. Help us all to live that way. Uh, thank you, Lord. Continue to be with us as we deal with COVID. 
Uh, we lift up those in the medical community. Lord, bless them, be near them, encourage them. Uh, we lift up those with COVID, help them as they recover and dealing with it. We lift up those that have had loved ones that have passed away from it. We pray that you be very near to them and meet their needs. Uh, thank you, Lord. We just give you praise. We give you glory. Uh, you are so good to us. Just continue to continue drawing us back to uh, Good Friday and Easter, your death and resurrection. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with uh, another devotional. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll uh, see you later. Bye-bye.